Hey, what's up, Vine Church? It's Tyler West, the founder and lead pastor here at the Vine Church, and I'm coming at you live from our Thursday night greenhouse gathering set. We talk about it every week, but what happens on this set is each and every Thursday night we get together and we believe that this is a place where community can happen, fellowship can happen, we have some great food, we build relationships, but more importantly, we grow the seeds that God's planted inside of us, and we believe that whatever you came in here feeling, you'll always leave feeling better. And that can be said for Sunday too. So I'm coming at you live from our Thursday night greenhouse gathering because we had some technical difficulties this past Sunday. And so we weren't able to get the message in your hand, but we believe in the message so, so much. We wanted to make sure that we recorded it and got it to you. So first things first, I just want to say thank you to our production, our worship team, our creative team, because they do a phenomenal job each and every Sunday. So this may not be what you're used to seeing, but we're so excited to make sure that we get it in your hands. So if you're interested in being part of our Thursday night greenhouse gathering, reach out to us at hello at thevine.tv and also make sure you can hit me up, tyler.west at thevine.tv or 864-706-9634. So today as we go through this message, we're talking about this concept of two sizes too small. Two sizes too small. And we're going to try to have the verses on the screen here so it may not come out as clear on camera. Once again, it's a shout out to our production and creative team each and every week for making this happen. So this week, you just might have to listen really closely as we get to talk about this concept called two sizes too small. And I don't know about you, but as Christmas time comes along, my favorite Christmas book, if you know anything about me, is The Polar Express by Chris Van Allsburg. And the reason is, I still hear the bell ring because I believe. If you know, you know. So today we're going to talk about, not my favorite Christmas book, but one of the all-time favorites that each and every one of us know about. And you can catch a hint from the title if you know where I'm going here. But we're going to talk today about this thing called Two Sizes Too Small from our friend that we get to see each and every year this time of year, The Grinch who stole Christmas. I'm going to read to you just a moment, and it says this. Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on quite right. It could be that perhaps his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm, lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a steer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled as the Grinch with his fingers nervously drumming, I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew all the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys and then oh the noise, oh the noise, noise, noise. That thing he hated, the noise, noise, noise. So I don't know about you, but last week we got to talk about the chains of unforgiveness for others and how we had to loose ourselves from the chains of the unforgiveness of others. Today we want to talk about this thing called two sizes too small. And I want to be honest with you and I want to be transparent and I want to tell you it's really easy for me to forgive other people. I, it doesn't mean that I hold a grudge. It doesn't mean that I'm perfect at it. But the thing we want to talk about the most is this thing that the Grinch struggled with. This thing called shame. This thing that he had. This noise, noise, noise that drowned out the joy and peace of the season. And most of the time that comes from us not being able to forgive ourselves. And I don't know, maybe you're there. But I can tell you, if you can hear the things I say to myself sometimes... You would think I was crazy. You probably already think that. But seriously, you probably wouldn't want to hang around me. Because here's the thing. I'm harder on myself than I'll ever be on anyone else. And I know that so many times because I'm harder on myself, the shame that I put on myself that I should never do, the weight of that 
is just noise that drowns out the joy and peace that Jesus died to give me. And so today, as we're getting ready, I would love for us to focus on this verse. Isaiah 54.4 says this, Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. You see, Jesus is talking here Realistically, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah is talking here about Jesus coming to give us peace. And he's reminding us that we should not fear what's happening from our shame. Yet so many times the shame and the weight of our shame is so hard to carry. Especially this time of year. Sometimes the shame can be, man, my gift is not good enough. Sometimes my shame can be my house is not big enough. Sometimes the shame can be I can't pay my bills. Sometimes the shame can be I don't look good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I, I, I can't talk to this person because I'm broken and, I, and, I, and I'm ugly or I, I, I just don't have what they need and we put shame upon ourselves. And here's what I want to tell you today, my church. Today is your day to set free from the chains that you have holding you back of shame. Because today that weight can be lifted but the thing that we've got to remember is this verse in Isaiah 54, 4 that says you will not be put to shame. And here's what I want to tell you. Jesus died on the cross for each and every one of us to have peace and joy this time of year. Not to be shame-filled, beat down, and feel like we'll never be good enough. So this time of year, sometimes the noise and the shame from our past can just drown out all the joy and peace in the present. And so today is your day to forgive yourself. As we go on, I want to talk to you about this story. If you know anything about me, the Gospel of John is somewhere that I can live in. And if you have your Bible, if you want a thumb there, if you're watching online right now, or are you just sitting down to have your morning cup of coffee, I just want you to open up your Bible and get to John 4, and we're going to start in verse 4. We're going to try to have it on the screen for you. I can't promise that it's clear, but here's the thing. If you will open your Bible, God will speak to you like never before. And so I would challenge you to thumb there right now or open up your Bible so that you can read along what I'm about to read in this story that encompasses this thing called shame. John 4, verses 4 through 6 says this. Now he had to go through Samaria. This is Jesus. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar. Remember that. Write that down. Sychar. S-Y-C-H-A-R. Near the plot of ground, Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus tried, tired, excuse me, as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? <laughs> his disciples had gone to get some food, they had went to Chick-fil-A and waited in line for some food. So the Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? I love what John says here. For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Verse 10 says this, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was who you asked for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Jesus ends this interaction at the well with this woman after he's talked with her about the shame of her relationships that she's carrying. This woman is sitting here and she's had relationships, she's been in marriages, and it's noon. And she's trying to get some water, but she runs into Jesus. Isn't it crazy how the encounter with Jesus can completely change our lives? The story ends with Jesus and this woman right here 
in John verse 25 and 26, and it says this. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. And when he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, am he. So today, I want to talk to you about shameful thinking. You know, Dr. Henry Cloud talks about this, and he talks about this as the three P's of shame. And today I want you to look, and we're going to go through this story with this woman at the well and our friend the Grinch, and we're going to talk about how the weight of our shame can drown out the peace and joy of the season. And so today, as we're talking through this, I want to give you three P's from Dr. Henry Cloud, what he says we can see in our thoughts, the noise of our shame. We can see how we are stuck in shame, and the weight of shame is outweighing, outweighing who Jesus is in our lives. And so here we go. The first P, if you're taking notes, is personal. The first P of shameful thinking is personal. It's personal. So here we are. If we think of it in terms of our friend the Grinch, he's taking Christmas personal. He was sitting up in his perch for 50 plus years and looks down on Whoville and he's all by himself and he knows that he couldn't go down to Whoville because maybe he was green or maybe he was different or... Maybe he just wasn't a who. I mean, he was close enough to him, but he, he just wasn't good enough to be him. And so he sits down and he says, I must take away the joy and peace of everyone around us. See, the weight of your shame will always leave you all alone. And it will push everyone in your life away because you take everything personal. And the way that you take it personal, and guys, I'm preaching to myself here because I live this more than I want to admit is you think you're not good enough. You think what you did in your past defines you. You think that everything that's happening to you is the world is out to get you, just like Mr. Grinch. How about this guy, how about this woman at the well who runs into this guy sitting on some stones at Jacob's well who she doesn't know? How does she feel? Well, remember I told you this. There's a town called Sikar that they came to. So let me tell you about this town called Sikar. It's really hard for scholars to nail down where that is. So they believe the woman actually came from Shechem to this place called Sikar. And this is what I love about God. How he just ordains everything. This town called Sikar, translated in Greek, is liar and drunkard. All right, y'all have a good day. Message over. <laughs> no, seriously. Liar and drunkard. So when you translate that, that means she came to a place from the lie that she was living was about to be exposed. She was drunk on her shame and she was literally walking in the middle of the desert at noon. If Sakar is where Shechem is, she had to have passed multiple wells to get to this one well way outside the city gates. Isn't it crazy? She had to go way outside of this place to get some water. And yet, here she is, living this lie, living this thing, carrying this shame, living a lie like it's probably okay. Like her Facebook post is all smiley pictures. Her Instagram selfies are all perfect situations in the perfect Christmas setting and the perfect children and the perfect gifts and the perfect wrapping and the perfect bow. Sound familiar? Isn't that what we all struggle with? Here's this woman from the town of Sakar. Here's what I don't want you to miss. If you name a child Sakar, it means end. And this is what I love about God. The end of her lying and drunkenness and shame is about to come because she's running into Jesus. So they're at this town called Sakar, and it will come to an end. Her shame is about to come to an end, but she's stuck. Because she's carried it and thinks, oh my goodness, I see this man and I know that I'm an object to him. I've tried to work out in marriages. I've tried to make relationships work. I've tried everything I possibly can to make this happen. And I just must not be good enough. You ever feel that way? 
you ever feel like it's just never going to be good enough? And because everything you've touched seems to have fallen apart, you just must be worthless. See, Dr. Henry Cloud talks about that. When we take things personally, when we are shameful in our thoughts, we start to absorb things personally. I look at this woman and she's literally in the middle of the day, in the hottest part of the day, getting something that should sustain her life when she's looking at the very thing that will give her life and she's so drunk on her shame and so weighed down by it that she can't see the peace that's sitting in front of her. And what I know is each and every one of us may have heard or have said phrase, it's just who I am. And a lot of times if we're not careful we will let the weight of our shame and that phrase drown out any joy and peace that we can give others because we believe it's just who I am. My circumstances have always been bad. My circumstances have always been broken. My circumstances have never worked out. I've tried to be married. I've tried to be in relationships. I've tried to be single. I've tried to be debt free. I've tried to do gift. I've tried to do budgeting. And every bit of it fell apart. And because it fell apart, I must be worthless. And because it fell apart, I must not be good enough. And here's what I want to tell you today. That's not why Jesus died. Jesus died to give each and every one of us life so that we can have peace, so that we can have joy, so that we can experience this living water that he's promising this woman that he has come to give. And yet the weight of our shame will blind us from it. Much like our friend, Mr. Grinch, and this woman at the well. The second thing that Henry Cloud talks about when we talk about shameful thinking, the second P is permanent. The second P is permanent. The first one is personal. The second P is permanent. If we look at the Grinch, we can look at a situation. He has sat up in this mountain looking down on Whoville for 50 plus years and he says, Christmas is just always going to be this way. And I don't like it. I don't like being alone. I don't like being separated from everyone. I don't like celebrating my life alone. But it must always just going to be this way. It's always, it's never going to change. So I got to do something about it. You know, this woman at the well, she's thinking the same thing. She feels that she's just an object for men because there's no way a relationship would work for her. So she's personally owned her shame. She feels like she's not good enough. And I imagine she's looking and she can't go to Aldi to go hit up the Aldi fines and, and, and she can't go to Walmart to get the deals in the middle of the day. She's got to go get water. It's kind of like realistically going to Walmart at 2 a.m. How many of us have ever done that? Isn't that like just a different breed? Like it's just a completely different animal. There's nothing wrong with going to Walmart at 2 a.m. It's just a different clientele than is there at 2 p.m. It's just a different clientele. So I don't know about you, but that's kind of where this woman is. She's thinking that it's always going to be this way. It's never going to be good enough. She's never going to be good enough. And it's never going to change. And she runs into this man who sees something in her more than she can see in herself. And she's thinking, <laughs> you know, when the Messiah comes, he'll truly set me free. But there's no way you are because I'm not worthy enough to talk to the Messiah because, see, Jews don't talk to Samaritans and the Messiah is going to be Jewish. So I can't talk to him. And obviously you're talking to me, so you can't be him. And I just always have to stick here and I'm always going to be alone and I'm always going to not have a relationship and I'm always not going to be married and I'm always going to be in debt and I'm always never going to be good enough. See, here's what I want to tell you where we've got it wrong in the church. This is why we want to be different at the vine. Religion will always remind you that you're not good enough. Will always remind you that you're not good enough. But a relationship with the creator of the universe will set you free. And that only happens through Jesus Christ. Because he is the truth. He is the life. And He is the way. And yet so many of us can get stuck thinking, 
This is just how it's going to be. It's the best it's going to get. How many of us say that over and over and over again? You know, that's where this woman was stuck, is in religion. She tried, and she tried, and she tried. You know, you don't step into five-plus marriages. You don't step into seven marriages. You don't step into ten relationships. You don't step into all these relationships if you're actually not trying and searching for something better. Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't always work out. Relationships don't always work out. But if you're not searching for something greater, there's no way that you're going to keep going back to the well. And that's where this woman was. She was going back to the well to hope to find something better because the way that it's always been just keeps drumming on. And the noise of her shame reminds her every day, you're not good enough. You've got to go to the well at noon because you ruin everything. I don't know about you, but sometimes in this season, it's exactly how us all can feel. And I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me. I want each and every one of us to let go of the weight of our shame and step into the joy and peace that this true season represents. The last P that Dr. Henry Cloud talks about is pervasive. SAT word of the day. Pervasive. Pervasive. It means everywhere. You know, the reason that the woman probably went to the well at noon is because everybody done talking about her business. Everybody knows she's with all these people. And now all of a sudden she's got this hidden relationship that Jesus calls out to her. This hidden relationship. She's with a man she's never been married to. And she's living with him. And she's in a relationship with him. And all of a sudden she's like, everybody knows about it. Everybody knows all my business. So I'm going to keep this hidden. And no one will know about it. And if they don't, then it's going to be fine. And see, your shame will do that to you. It will try to keep you in sin and will try to help make you want to hide things that will always be brought to light because you're stuck in your shame. And this woman's thinking that everywhere she goes, people talk about her. Everywhere she goes, they're just talking about her. She can't go to Ingalls to get something on sale. She can't go to Aldi to get the Aldi fine because the cashier is going to talk about what she did this week. Sound familiar? Don't we all get there? See, when we're stuck in shame, we think the world talks about us. We think that everywhere we go, every bad thing we did is written on a wall somewhere and somebody took a picture of it and threw it up on Instagram and said, look at the sins of this person. And here's what I want to be real with you with. Everybody's got so much going on, they don't care. But shame will make you think they do. Shame will make you think. Shame will make you think that they're out to get you and they see it all. And I want to tell you, the creator of the universe is the only one who sees it all. More on that in a second. How about our friend the Grinch? He looks around and says, everywhere I go is Christmas. Everywhere I go is joy and peace. And I can't experience it. I've tried everything I possibly can. I've stayed out of those people's way. I've tried not to get run over by them. I've tried not to have relationships with them. I've let them do their own thing for 50 plus years. And it seems like not only is it ever going to change, but everywhere I go, that's all I hear. The noise of your shame will do that. The noise of your shame will make you feel like you're never going to be good enough. It's going to make you feel like it's always been this way. And it's going to make you feel ashamed to even walk out the front door of your house. And here's the thing about shame, guys. Jesus died to give us more. See, what I love about this is if we can listen to our talk, if we can listen to how we say things, if we can listen to how we speak, we can see if we're living in a shameful life or a set-free life. I love that Dr. Henry Cloud has these three Ps, and I love that so many times. You know, I love how kids are just honest. 
They haven't been programmed to have a filter. As we get older, we always want to have a filter. We always want to look the best. We always want to make sure everything sounds the best and, and works the best. But if you get around a child playing a sport or get around a child at a fair and they're playing a game, you can all of a sudden hear the weight of shame. Like, I don't know about you, but some of the favorite games at the fair is like throwing a dart at a balloon. Have you ever just heard a kid throw a dart at a balloon because they want to get the big teddy bear, right? Like, they want to get the big ninja action figure. Like, they just want to hit this balloon with a dart. And they throw the three darts and they miss all three times. And usually what happens, either they're going to be like, oh man, all shucks, move on. But if we're really honest, shame will show up and it'll be, man, I'm not good enough to hit that balloon with those darts. Man, I, I'll never be able to get that action figure or that teddy bear. And man, everywhere I go, all these carnival rides are great, but all that's weighing me down is the shame of not being able to pop that balloon. Christmas is no different. Each and every one of us get there, and each and every one of us feel that. And most of the time, this time of year, it's magnified because we're around the people that we've wronged. We're around the people that we've hurt. And the shame of that hurt and that past drowns out. It's noise that drowns out the joy and peace of having a relationship with those around us. So my question is, how do you feel about that? When you examine your thoughts, do you always see the shameful things outweigh the joyful things in your life? And you say, you don't get it. You don't know what I've done. You don't know who I've hurt. You don't know what's going on. And I'm going to tell you, you're absolutely right. But I know one more P that Dr. Henry Cloud didn't talk about was shame. And it's the one P that will set you free. And it's found in this. John 4, verse 39 through 41, says this. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with him. He stayed two days. And because of his word, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. We have heard for ourselves and we know that this man is really the Savior of the world. And the one thing that you've got to remind yourself to get over the weight of your shame is this. In Christ you've been pardoned. In Christ you've been pardoned. You see, this woman is carrying the weight of her shame. She doesn't want to be around people. She goes to this well to get water. She has an encounter with Jesus. And only through Christ can you experience forgiveness. And what shows in her life is when she experiences this forgiveness, she don't care what's written on the wall. She don't care that all of her sins are out there for everyone to see. She don't care. All she knows is that she's experienced joy and peace and she's got to share it with the world, not hold it in. It's not just for her. Everyone's got to experience the freedom of the weight of her shame being lifted. And the only way that that can happen is through a relationship from an encounter with Jesus Christ. And all that has to be done is we've got to know that we have been pardoned from our shame. We are not our past. We are not the things that we did. We are not the people that we hurt. Because in Christ, our life is completely changed. Yet so many times, what we think following Jesus is, is changing our behavior in order to get closer to a relationship with Him. This woman at the well was there, but there was not one behavior she changed before she encountered Jesus. Yet after she found a relationship with Jesus, all of her behavior changed. Because the weight of her shame was gone. That is what this season represents. Us being set free from our past. Us being set free from the sin and shame that is shackling us and not allowing us to have joy and peace. And so the question I have for us is where are we at? Do we live a pardoned life or do we live a shameful life where we'll never be good enough? It's always going to be this way and everyone knows it. Or we live a life that's pardoned. That says, hey, I don't know what's going on here, but this 
Man knew everything that I did. He set me free. He told me exactly my sins. Even those that you didn't talk about. You didn't know about this relationship. You didn't know what I was walking through. But He did. And He didn't beat me up for it. He just said, look. Have a relationship with me and you'll be set free. This woman should have been stoned by the Jewish law. Religion would have said she was stoned. But because she was a Samaritan... She didn't hold to that. And yet, she encounters Jesus. And she's set free from the law that will remind her of her shame. And here's what I want to tell you. Religion will always change, tell you to change your behavior to get close to God. And here's what I want to set you free from today. Your behavior will change when you've been close and had a relationship with God and not a second before. Because it'll you can change your behavior... But I guarantee you, you'll be back to where you were. I don't know when, but I promise it will fall apart without Christ in it. And so today, I want each and every one of us to see that we can live a life that's pardoned. So, so many of us can get stuck in this. Because our circumstances make us feel like we're not worth it. And I, wanna, I want each and every one of us to go in this season. And not be the woman who shamefully walked to the well. But be the woman who ran into a town and shared the peace and joy that only Christ can give. Because that's what it's all about. And the thing that I want us to declare over our life is this. Whatever my shame is, I am not abandoned. Because in Christ, I am accepted. I am not ugly because in Christ... I am treasured. I am not in bondage of my shame because in Christ I am free. I am not broken because in Christ I am whole. I am not beat down because in Christ I am blessed. I am not left to do this by myself in all of my sin and shame because in Christ I'm accepted. So many of us just need to declare this over our life today. And yet here's the thing. We're like Mr. Grinch. We go down and we think if we rob the joy and peace of all of those around us that our shame will go away. But it doesn't. What happens to Mr. Grinch, you say? And the Grinch, with his Grinch ice-cold feet in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't thought of before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Perhaps Christmas means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, those in Whoville say the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel so quite right, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. You see, our shame will always make our hearts stay two sizes too small. But when we've been set free from it, and we see that maybe, perhaps, it's not our shame that dominates our life, but the freedom that only Jesus can give, we can't help, can't help but change. We can't help but share joy and peace with others. We know that we are not defined by our past, and we know, we know that we have been set free. And here's what I want to tell you. Jesus died so that each and every one of us could sit at the head of the table. But the reason that most of us experience shame is this. We are trying to change our behavior and not really be in a relationship with Him. You see, what happens so many times in our life is as a Christian, you can have this thing called conviction. And conviction will tell you when you've done something wrong. But here's where you're going to know the difference of whether your shame is outweighing who you have a relationship with. 
When you're convicted of something, the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, as it's called, Jesus promised to give us the Spirit that raised Him from the dead, will say, hey, that's wrong. we got to work on this. And it will come to your defense and your aid, and it will help you walk through your circumstance, even if you've done something wrong. But the accuser, Satan, and his craftiness and his shame will come to you when you've done something wrong and tell you you've ruined everything. It'll never change. It'll never be good enough. And the weight of your shame, guys, if you're listening to the accuser, you'll never get out of it. And so you've tried your way. You've tried behavioral modification and you still see that you're listening to the accuser. And here's where I want to set you free today. Remember that I am not my shame because in Christ I'm free. And so many of us are standing here tonight as I get to wrap up this message. And you've tried it your way. You've tried to change your behavior. You've tried it a million times. You've gone through the 12 steps and it's just not working. And here's what I know about you. The reason you can't experience freedom from your shame is because you never experience the forgiveness that only Christ can give. It's that simple. Because you can't give forgiveness to yourself if you haven't first been forgiven. And it's this simple. It's faith that Jesus is who He says He is. He told the woman at the well, I am the Messiah. I am the one who has come to set you free. And yet we think we've got to work to get there. We've got to change our behavior to get there. And that's not why He came. He came to give us joy and peace by only one thing. Receiving the gift by faith that He is who He says He is. And what is He? Forgiveness for our sins. And so today, I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And if you're sitting there and you've never nailed down a relationship with Jesus, you've never been forgiven, I just want you to repeat after me these words. Dear Jesus, I believe I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross for my sin. But love me enough not to stay dead, but left an empty tomb so that I may have life. Come take over my life. Teach me how to follow you, step by step, the best way I know how. And if that's you, and this is the first time that you can say that you have received the forgiveness of God because you believe Jesus is who He says He is at that well. He is the Messiah. He is greater than your shame. He came to give you joy and peace. If that is you, I'm begging you today, reach out. Reach out. Because you were never meant to do this alone. Reach out to me. My phone number is 864-706-9634. You can email me at tyler.west at thevine.tv. You can also email hello at thevine.tv. Please let us know because we want to walk with you through this. Because here's the thing. Just like this woman went and told all those people what she had done, I guarantee you she still struggled with her shame. And that's not what any of us want for you. We want you to walk in a pardoned life and that requires you to have someone come alongside you and do this life with you. And when you do, you'll feel like Mr. Grinch, seated at the head of the table, carving the roast beast. And so if you get nothing else from this today, I want you to know you're greater than your past. And how I know that is in Christ he came to set you free. Your past does not define you. It's just a mile marker on the road to freedom. And the way that you have freedom is in Christ alone. So if shame is dominating you, I'm going to beg you, if you have a relationship with Jesus, stop listening to the accuser and listen to the Holy Spirit and watch it set you free and watch it set the people in your life free because you're willing to step out and share the peace and joy being set free from your shame. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. 
and this stripped down set, this set at the Thursday night greenhouse gathering. I hope that you will join us each and every Sunday as we get to meet at 10 a.m. at the Thomas E. Hanna YMCA, 151 Reebok Street in Spartanburg, South Carolina. If there's any way that we can serve you, please feel free to reach out to us. But more importantly, come celebrate being set free with us. I can't wait to see you on a Sunday really soon or a Thursday night. I love you and go live a life of joy and peace this Christmas season.